Hey, what's up? This is Justin from Ecclesia, and I'm here in Port Orange down at the shore and just enjoying this beautiful Shabo, so I'm ready to get into the uh, Word of God with you this morning as we continue our journey through the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. Now, if we go over to, uh, to the book of Revelation, Jesus addresses one of the churches who, though they were doing a lot of really good things, had, uh, had really forgotten the love that they had at first. And we kind of see this happen, uh, what this love is, as we look into, for instance, the book of Galatians, where the apostle kind of confronts the church in Galatia because they had received him as though he were Christ himself when he first arrived with the gospel, even though he was in, um, well, he was in a state of being that was, you know, nothing to be impressed by. I mean, it was something that he was kind of sickly among them, and, and yet they received him with such love. They responded to the presence of Christ that was with him with, uh, with such lavish love that, that he says they would have torn their own eyes out and given them to him if they were able to. I mean, it was like, it was a, a significant response uh, to the presence of Christ, a significant response of faith. And, um, and so as Jesus confronts this church in the book of Revelation that they had forgotten their first love and that they needed to return to loving people in that fashion and being sensitive to the presence of Christ and responding to uh, the presence of Christ with the appropriate kind of love, um, it's, uh, it's the same thing that's really going on here in Thessalonica, this church who had received the gospel and been powerfully impacted and had been extremely fruitful was really um, in danger of slipping into, uh, I don't know, some, some coldness, I guess. And so the apostle encourages them in this section of scripture to continue in the kind of steadfast love and faithfulness that, uh, that has taken them thus far and not to, uh, not to allow the, the persecutions and the hardships to, to cause them to be bitter, but rather to grow better. It says this, And you learned how to copy us and the Lord. When you received the word, you had a lot to suffer, but you also had the Holy Spirit's joy. As a result, you became a model for all the believers in both Macedonia and Achaia, for the word of the Lord has resonated out from you. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has gone out to people everywhere. This means that we haven't had to say anything. They themselves tell the story of the kind of welcome we had from you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming fury. So the Apostle Paul foresaw this... Uh, this time of great distress, and uh, we know that the that judgment always begins at the house of God, and we see the destruction that came upon uh, Jerusalem in 70 A.D. towards the end of the Apostle Paul's uh, ministry. Um, I think he was he was killed typically probably in the mid to late 60s, and um, and he uh, and Jerusalem was really just obliterated. In, uh, in 70 AD, and then from there we saw the entire Roman Empire come to a, a screeching halt and utter destruction. Um, so the Apostle Paul saw this, uh, Christ himself had prophesied it, and, uh, and the Apostle is really trying to encourage this church that if you want to be those beatitude types of people, the people that Jesus speaks about in Matthew chapter 5, that you really need to continue steadfast in this love and endure in this love. And we do that by looking at the apostles, by copying them even as they copied Jesus, and ourselves to become a model for others. You know, Jesus said that they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. And, um, and when that's actually happening, word about that spreads very rapidly. People see that and they know that something is different that this is genuine, that it's not some, you know, some hokey religion where people are just, I don't know, doing all sorts of weird stuff, but it's, it's genuine relationship with the one true and living God, genuine relationship among those who've placed their faith in this man, Jesus of Nazareth, who really showed us what true love does. You know, it lays its life down uh, for its friends, and it's just amazing. And so not only did this church in Thessalonica receive the apostle and his entourage, 
with tremendous love, but because of the experience of the presence of Christ in that interaction, they actually turned from the foolishness, from the idolatry and all that sort of stuff to really focus on the important things in life and the important things, the important things to God. And, uh, and it's just an amazing thing. And as we wait for the restoration of all things, as we, wait, as we wait for the promises of God, as we wait for the Son of God, Jesus, to come and set all things right with perfect justice, we are called to do so in a, in a way that rightly reflects that future reality that we hope for. And um, that's not always easy. So I praise God that we can always, if we find ourselves, I don't know, straying, we can always repent towards God and and come to the table humbly and receive uh, that which has been gifted to us, that good gift of uh, the word of Christ, the body and the blood, and um, and really be ministered to by the word of God and the spirit of God so that we can continue steadfast. Because I know I need to be refreshed on a regular basis, and that happens as we delve into the teaching, as we delve into the, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. As we, uh, as we remember, remember the love that we had at first, the love that we experienced at first, the love that we shared at first. So uh, may God bless you, may God keep you, may He make His face to shine upon you as He lifts up His countenance and gives you shalom. Amen. Have a great week.